Hey everyone, well I'm back to making videos on a regular basis, but I want to catch up with you and tell you what I've been up to when I was gone during my hiatus. In my last vlog, I told you about how Ashley after National decided to move on. Well after that, I moved back to Pennsylvania. Well I never really was gone, I lived in New Jersey when I trained there Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday I was in Pennsylvania working primarily teaching and landscaping until the winter set in. Anyway, so what happened was I moved back and I was focusing on getting caught up with all my bills and stuff like that. See what happens is after a while you can have bills accumulate and then in order to keep moving forward you want to make sure you get things caught up and then prepare for the next season. I was actually intending to do that last season because I had a big bill at the end of my partnership with Xenia. What happened was every now and then during our five years I'd have a month that was like a bad month and so you know they let me roll it over to the next month but before you knew it I accumulated about eight and a half thousand dollars which you know is uh, something that I wanted to take care of as quickly as possible and I spent most of last year paying it off and then also working to get ready for the next season with Laura. But when that partnership didn't work out, a week later, Ashley contacted me and said if I wanted to do a trial with her. Now, the thing is, if I hadn't taken the opportunity, I would not have gone to nationals. But at the same time, I knew that I was not really in a position to do a partnership at that time because I hadn't saved up that money that you normally need before moving to a new area. But fortunately she was close enough to where I can still go there, but I couldn't do it on a regular basis. So I came up with this crazy but very efficient solution. I lived in my car Monday through Friday, I would shower at the rink, and then I would go home and work Saturday and Sunday in Pennsylvania and Baltimore and Maryland where I teach students and then landscaping in Pennsylvania and a bit of photography as well. Anyway, it was a crazy solution and it worked out really well. Okay, granted, there were some days that were really cold, but I got through it. You know, didn't get any frostbite. I learned how to keep myself insulated, but now I'm ready for the next Arctic expedition if anyone needs anyone. But anyway, I think that was one of the best ideas I had that year. I mean, in terms of making the solution work on the spot where you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? If you gotta keep moving forward, sometimes you have to do drastic decisions. And it worked out really well. Because if I hadn't, Ashley and I would not have gone to that Nationals because I just didn't have enough money saved up to move and get a place there while at the same time trying to get myself established to coach there and you know, get landscaping and stuff like that. It's never easy to move, especially when it was last minute, and then we had to just hit the ground running in order to get the free dance test in, and because we had like three weeks, I think, to get everything ready, and then she was, of those three weeks, she was gone for one week to do Soul Dance Nationals, so it was really two weeks. And we pulled it off. It was crazy, but it all came together in the end. I'm really happy that we did it. Anyway, so after I moved back, I wanted to get all my bills caught up and save up for the next season, that is, this season now. So I've been working all day every day. Primarily what I do here is I do a lot of landscaping now that springs here, and then I coach, I have about nine students right now, and then I do a bit of photography. And the thing with photography is you really have to be in an area for a long time to really get established. It's very hard going back and forth from places because you lose clients and then you come back trying to get yourself established. It's never easy. And then when I came back here, I thought about it. What else could I do? Because it was winter after national, so you couldn't really landscape. I didn't have many students, but I wanted to start paying off my bills. I mean, I still had the nationals bill with Ashley, which was about a grand and a half. And then I had, I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't just nationals, it was a the month before and nationals and you know you know what it is and then also I had a bit of the Xenia bill still left over which most of it I had paid off that year when I was skating with Laura and skating with Ashley and so what happened was I came up with this idea I was like okay so what do I have what can us I do and then I thought about it I was like I used to collect a bunch of stuff right? I used to collect comic books and action figures and Legos and all kinds of this stuff 
And then I was like, well, what if I sold some of that stuff on eBay? You know, I figured I'd make a couple of bucks. And actually, I did pretty well. Uh, in my first 60 days or something, I sold like three grand worth of like stuff that anyone else would have probably thought was junk. <laughs> I mean, literally. You know, people would have thought that, you know, unless you're a collector, you don't know what you're looking at, you might think this is junk, right? But, and actually, I, um, I had quite a bit of success with eBay, and then I've continued doing that. And as you can see behind me, I have some of the collectibles that I'm buying and selling. So, while I'm not just selling off the stuff that I have, also if I see something that I think, okay, well, this is uh, being undersold right now, and if I sell it now, I can flip it. Or if I go to a comic book shop or whatever, and I'm uh, thumbing through the comic books, back issues, whatever, and then I'm like, okay, well, this is something that I can see going up in price, then, you know, I buy that and then save it and then resell it on eBay. So I've had some success with that as well. I'm trying to turn it into a regular business because as a skater, it's an itinerant life. You never know how long you're going to be in an area. You always want to be able to be in an area for a long time, but it's never guaranteed. And then you know, if it ends, you got to start over and it's always hard. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to gravitate more toward work that I can take with me anywhere, and that's why eBay, I'm really hoping is going to work out for me in the long term, because if I can really get that going, then I can just pick up and go with my products or buy new products elsewhere after I sell off existing products. So I'm really excited and hopeful about that. I'm back to making regular videos now, so look forward to about one video a week, maybe more of some kind of exercise. I'm going to try to keep it fun for you guys. So I'm going to try to make some videos you guys have been asking for for a while and keep it interesting, keep you guys more engaged, you know, and excited. And I'm going to try to give you a one vlog video once a week so that you can kind of know what is going on from week to week instead of having to do, you know, a six minute ramp video like right now and getting you all caught up on that. But the big news that I haven't told you yet is that I have a partner. I did a tryout about two months ago, and that was in Vancouver, British Columbia, in Canada. And with a, it's with a girl named Nicole, or Nikki, and it went really well. So we both really liked each other, and now I'm going to be moving. I'm going to be driving in about 10 days across country from Pennsylvania up toward about Illinois and then straight across to... Washington State, upstate, and then I intend to live in Washington and train in Canada with her. So that way I can still work in America and then make the money so that I can keep going with the training. If we pull it off, trust me, it'll be the most incredible thing that I have ever yet accomplished. So I am like super excited. <laughs> I mean, you have no idea. So I think that it's going to be really good. And the other thing I wanted to tell you was, I've had a number of you guys ask me about translating the videos, and one of the reasons the videos are in English was, of course, you know, I primarily speak in English, but it's also the most commonly used language in the world, so that way you reach a much wider audience. But I also speak Russian, and Nikki, she speaks Japanese, so we talked about it, and we intend to put out videos in those three languages, not just English. So if you see flags next to a video, then what it signifies is the language that's being used in the video. And before we have an international incident, I want to make it clear that the flags are based on the nation flag's ratio. So for instance, the American flag is on a 10 by 19 ratio, and whereas like a um, the Japanese flag is a 2 to 3 ratio, and a Russian flag is also a 2 to 3 ratio. So I intend to keep them approximately to the ratios of what the country's established, out of respect for each country, instead of trying to force them all into a single ratio size. So if you see the flag slightly different sized, it's just because the nation specifies its ratio of its flag to be that particular ratio. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Anyway. So if you see videos with a flag next to it, then that's going to be the language being used in the video. And I'm going to usually put out first the English version, because it's the most accessible, and then presumably the Russian and the Japanese as well. I mean, I'm already working on translating some of the Russian videos, so you're probably going to see those first. And then when Nikki and I get established and get into a regular rhythm, we're probably going to put out more Japanese videos as well. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned. I think it's going to be 
really exciting going forward here.